In future videos, I will need ethanol, alcohol, and hydrous. The main issue with this is that the ethanol and water creates an azeotrope. This means that together they have a higher or lower boiling point than each of the individual chemicals. An azeotrope is defined as a mixture of two or more liquids which has a constant boiling point and composition during distillation. An example of this is the mixture of ethanol at 95% and water at 5%. When you heat the mixture and then measure the steam, you will find the same concentration of ethanol to water. When we graph this, we can see that 100% pure ethanol has a higher boiling point than 95.6, making it almost impossible to distill further. Luckily, there are two methods of creating anhydrous ethanol. The first includes adding a second solvent, like toluene, to create an azeotrope with the water that boils at a lower temperature than the ethanol water azeotrope. This lets the toluene water to be boiled off azeotropically, leaving behind 100% ethanol. After this method, I would still have to store the ethanol over sieves because of its ability to pull water from the air that it comes into contact with. Unfortunately, when I was looking for toluene online, it's slightly out of my price range, at least for now. Luckily, there is a second way to do this that is frankly much easier and much more straightforward. This process involves drying the ethanol with molecular sieves. These sieves have small holes that will absorb water but leave the ethanol behind. Molecular sieves can pull off about 15% of their weight of water, so with some quick math we can find out how many grams of sieves we had to add to how many milligrams of ethanol and water. The ethanol I purchased online consists of 95.6% ethanol with a 4.4% mixture of water and isopropyl alcohol. This means I will first need to distill out the isopropyl before drying out the mixture with molecular sieves. This includes storing it over the sieves after the distillation is done. So that's exactly what I did. I distilled out the isopropyl alcohol followed by storing it over the sieves. As long as your container is airtight, the sieves will continue to do their job. The main issue comes time when you need to use the ethanol. The sieves I bought create this dust within the ethanol that needs to be filtered off before use. You can do this with cotton and sea light or just cotton and coffee filter. Either of these choices will work to filter off the dust. Once it is filtered, you will need to use the ethanol quickly or store it back over the sieves so the ethanol does not have time to pull more water from the air, ultimately lowering the percentage. It is also good to note that these sieves can be reused when they are dried out properly. If you put them in the oven at about 150 degrees for 30 minutes, they will dry out and you will be able to completely reuse these sieves for your next run. So even today that I used the drying agent of molecular sieves to create my 100% ethanol, next time I really want to try the toluene method and boil it off azeotropically. But until then, have a great rest of your day.